LACERT TAX SOFTWARE PROGRAM OVERVIEW. We've created this short overview to give you a really good understanding of the end-to-end -end process of preparing a return in LACERT. We're going to cover the following topics. The layout and design of the product, the information and features available at the client screen, how to enter data, how to review a tax return, we'll look at diagnostics, and finally, the tax analysis. So at the client screen of LACERT, to know the basic functionality of our program is very simple. And in fact, it takes me about 10 minutes to train someone on how to use LACERT. Even though it's a very complex program in terms of what it can do from a tax perspective, it really is one of the easiest to use. All you have to know is in the upper left-hand side of the screen, we have six tabs. And all you're going to do as you prepare a return is move from the left to the right in the tab set, and that's how you complete a return. The first tab that says clients is currently highlighted and that's why we see a list of all of our clients here on the client screen. If you open any of these returns, the tab will automatically shift from clients to detail and in detail is where you enter all the tax return information. After you've entered the tax return data, slide over to forms and this is where you can view the federal and the state tax returns completed. You can review them there on screen. After that, you move to Diagnostics to make sure any issues are handled. After that, we move to the Analysis tab. Now this is a little different. What this gives you is a bunch of data that you can share with your client around their tax return. Talking about IRA contributions and SEP contributions and comparing the return against the national average. So what I'm going to do over the course of roughly seven to, ten, seven to eight minutes now is take you through each tab so you understand the workflow of LACERT. So the client screen it handles a lot of your basic functionality. Managing your client files is all done out here. And the first thing I can tell you that clients really like about the screen is the ability to, des to design uh, and implement column sets here. So you can see the columns I have. Full name, uh, last name first, name of my client. I've got another column that says status that shows the status of all my tax returns in production every preparer who's assigned to, to each return. There are about 500 columns you can choose from to really customize this screen. You can see I've got other columns over here on the right, Fed estimates for the first quarter. So I want to know everyone who has a federal estimate due for first quarter, there are the amounts. I, I would also see things like alimony and who has business income or losses or what the total itemized deductions are. So again, to change it, all you do is right click your mouse and say adjust display columns. Everything on the right, is currently what I'm viewing on my screen and everything on the left is what I can select from. So if I want to see another item of income and I want to know everyone's capital gain or losses, click the right arrow, shift it over, you've now got a column for capital gains or losses. The status feature is used by the vast majority of our clients to keep track of the work in progress. Let's say you have a return here for Eric Barton that's currently information pending, but you've just put the return on extension. You want to mark it as on extension. Click a button at the top of the screen for client status, open the list and select on extension and click OK. It's just changed the, ter the terminology that's listed on the screen. On the left side of the page, we also build in a filtering system that clients love. So if you've got, let's say, 51040s here and you only want to see those returns uh, maybe that are under review or that you need to schedule a planning appointment for, use the client status filter for that. Click schedule a planning appointment. Here are the ones you need to schedule. How many clients do you have that are currently on extension or final or uh, info pending? We also have a filter built in for all of the preparers in the firm. So just click the name of the preparer, John, Terry, Lynn, and it shows you who's working on what return. So the filtering system is really good. So I'm going to use a tax return example. The client I'm going to use is um, John and Mary Taxpayer. And it's this ret return right here. Sorry, Jack and Kathy Taxpayer. If I double click, it takes me, you can see at the top, the tab is now on detail. And remember, this is where you enter the data. So this is one of the best parts of LACERT is the ease of data entry in our product is really unmatched. It's not a forms data entry. You're not looking at a tax form and entering data directly to it or linking from the tax form. It's more of a categorized information system here for data entry based on data sheets. If you look at the flow of these screens, they exactly match the flow of what you see on 1040 page one and two. So I've got general, which includes client information and dependents, uh, payments and penalties. Then I have an income section with all the income of LACERT listed here. 
deductions, credits, taxes, other. And finally, on the right, we have what we call miscellaneous forms. So data entry is simple. We give you great descriptions to understand what goes where. But if I want to enter business, in, I, in business income, I just click right on six, screen 16. Scroll down, enter the income, enter the cost of goods, the expenses. You will also see on many of our screens columns on the right for prior year amount. So you have a reference to what was in the prior year return. Now, every screen that you see here that's bolded, it means that there is also already data on that screen. So it's easy at your table of contents to know what's in the return already. In addition to bolding the screens, every screen that's currently in use gets a tab running along the bottom of the page. So the benefit of the tab is it shows me exactly what's in my return. I don't have to keep coming back to the table of contents to pick a screen that I know I'm already using. So the example is I go into screen 16 for business income. I enter all the data for the Schedule C, but now I want to access the rental screen. Just go down to the bottom, click Schedule E. It's already active. I've already got a rental property. I want to go to dividends. I click dividends. Or if I want to go to Schedule A, I click Schedule A. Now the tab on the bottom left that says contents is the one that if you click, it will take you back to the main screen. So that's really the ease of use of LACERT. Just come in here, select the screen you want. We'll figure out what forms and schedules are needed. Now, after data entry, you want to go to the Forms tab up top to actually review what's in the return. And it's represented on the left-hand side. So here's a, a state box with U.S., that's the federal return, and a California. Because U.S. is currently selected, that means these are all my federal forms and schedules and worksheets, right down to the invoice and the letter and depreciation schedules. Everything is viewable at this point with no print previews are required. Now, if I click on the Form 1040, one thing you'll really like here is on every form, if we have generated a backup worksheet, we'll put a link on the form that says WKS. So instead of searching for my wage schedule somewhere over here on the left, just click the link and we'll pop it right up on the screen for you. Same thing if I scroll down to uh, the IRA deduction, even though it doesn't look like there was an allowable IRA deduction, there is a worksheet that we created and showing you the line by line computations of the IRA. So you'll see those all over the place, very helpful. Probably the best feature in review is this one. Even though this isn't data entry on the form, if you have a number like here on line 9B for qualified dividends of 2,700, you can right click, you can do a function called jump to input, and you can see the details of where these numbers are coming from in your data entry. 1099 DIV has two payers that I entered, both have amounts for qualified dividends. But if I had a partnership K1, which I do for ABC partnership, and there were any amounts coming from qualified dividends from that K1, we would list the amount there. If you want to link back to the item, just click Citibank, and now I'm back in data entry, and I can make a change to whatever the number is. I can put in $600. I can come back to the form, and then we will recompute in just a sec and give you the new result. So if you're ever wondering where a number comes one, you want to track back to the numbers, just right-click on the field and go there. Okay. Now, the next in the sequence after the, the reviewing of the tax return is the diagnostics. Pretty basic. You have an upper section called critical and a lower section called informational. The difference is everything that's critical needs to get fixed. So we get, they're linked, right? The, and the entry for qualified dividends exceeds the total ordinary dividends. So it looks like I made a mistake there. Okay, I'll put in the actual ordinary dividends for 3,000. I'll go back to diagnostics. It will remove any issues as I fix them, okay? Now the bottom section, these are just informational. Not errors, but we just want to give you information about things you might want to consider in the return or things we've done. So here it tells me that the traditional IRA was disallowed because their modified AGI is in excess of the threshold for the IRA. Or the California, they don't get the child and dependent care expense, again, because of an AGI limitation. So it's going to talk about a lot of different things down here. And really, I think it gives you peace of mind to know that the product is looking for areas that maybe are inconsistent or things that you might want to do in the return. Last piece of the puzzle is the final tab at the top called Analysis. This is an awesome tool so that you can share data with your client and look like a hero to them. Uh, we talk about retirement contributions and future tax savings and tax tips down here, Schedule A and Schedule C comparisons. 
So you'll see things like it'll say the taxpayer could have contributed $54,000 to a self-employed retirement plan and they would have saved $18,604. Uh, they also could contribute up to $12,500 to a simple plan. The employer matching contributions would be about $79,13, tax savings of $71,45. There's a whole bunch of tax tips that we provide. And then down here where we compare the tax return against the national average. The, their state and local income taxes are 72% lower than the typical amount deducted by taxpayers claiming the deduction was similar AGI. Same thing with the Schedule C. And what, where I think clients like this is, you know, maybe the commission expense is 1,500% higher than the national average. That might be something you investigate with the client, make sure that all the numbers they're giving you are actually accurate. Okay. Finally, the last thing to talk about was because of all the tax law changes in 2018, we, we automatically built in a, something called a tax reform impact summary. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this on a different client. Um, I'll open this return and go to forms. So automatically, we create this impact summary. If you click on it, it takes the 2017 data from the return you just did and, and projects out 2018 taxes. So you'll see things like the taxes have been limited to $10,000. You'll see things like the standard deduction has been doubled. Uh, the exemption deduction has been eliminated. We've also calculated the deduction for qualified business income on this return. The child tax credit has been increased. So now they're seeing $4,000 when they saw nothing last year. That's because you know the threshold is higher. So this is a really nice document that you can generate and give your client to give them an idea because that's the question you're getting all the time what is going to happen in 2018. So that's a really good kind of a quick overview of Lacert. Again, a really simple product to master, and we wish you uh, a lot of luck in your demonstration. We hope you enjoy it.